Good evening. My name is Ryan Werner, and this is my Eastern Illinois Technology and Society final presentation. Our professor has asked us to make this video in answering two different questions amongst six different topics. The first question we were asked to answer is what kind of world will my children live in? Well, I've already beaten that question to the punch because I have an 11 year old daughter who's going on 18. And if any of you that have daughters know what I'm going through or what we are going through. And those of you who don't have children, good luck, especially daughters. So to answer that question, I have decided to start with artificial intelligence and then communications technology and then vaccines. Artificial intelligence may seem like something that it was not intended for maybe children use in school, but with the pandemic, it kind of became paramount and very upfront. It was something where my daughter would ask, how do you spell a word? Because when the pandemic hit for her, it was at the end of her third grade year and all of her fourth grade year and even affected some of her fifth grade year. So she's already ending fifth grade and she's going to be a middle schooler pretty soon here. Good gracious. Anyways, um, so she had to use uh, Alexa numerous times of how to spell a word, how to use it in a sentence, minor math questions. You know, where maybe she, maybe I, you know, I was busy or her wife was busy and, you know, we just couldn't answer it at the moment. So she would just ask, you know, a simple question. Math, you know, um, multiplying was the biggest thing for her because that was very difficult for her. But, you know, aside from making a shopping cart or, you know, looking up something, she used it to help with her homework. So that was something that was very big with her and it's only going to grow from there. I believe the uh, artificial intelligence that we use is very minimal, but it is also going to become more interactive towards us, maybe more descriptive. Uh, if you have seen uh, the movie, which I will probably reference a lot of movies for these things just because it has to do with technology. But if you've seen uh, the time machine where the artificial intelligence person was actually became the teacher of history for a while. So uh, it might, many years from now, or maybe just around the corner, it may be becoming more interactive. Uh, the other thing that she really had to get used to was uh, communications technology. Uh, she had to really use uh, such things as Zoom or whatever program the school wanted them to use for schooling. And she had to learn how to look at a screen for eight hours a day you know, for homework and educational educational purposes. I mean, look back for us for years when we were eight, uh, depending on who you are and, you know, uh, what you did in life, you were told not to be on the screen very long because it was bad for your eyes. But then here we are in 2021 and part of 2022, look at that screen and go to school because it was the safest option that we had. So we kind of had to throw some things to the wayside. But I mean, she really had to learn that. And I think it's only going to become more advanced. I mean, you know, look at artificial, I mean, look at um, virtual reality. You know, I know in my work as a surveyor, they start using uh, virtual reality to do walkthroughs for buildings till you can see the infrastructure and, and they can see the stages of how it's built. I mean, she might take a virtual reality tour of a zoo so that they can actually go inside the enclosure or she might take a virtual reality of uh, an art gallery. I mean, imagine doing the Lou uh, over in Paris from your bedroom, you know, where she could, you know, not have to leave the country to go see it, but she might have to do it. Uh, there could be such things as seminars and lectures you could visit and you could do it artificially, you know, or uh, virtual reality wise or virtual virtually. Um, but on the same token, you know, this could become a society like if anybody has uh, watched the movie or read any of the books, uh, Ready Player One or even Ready Player Two. I mean, they had full out realities where people woke up, put on their headset, grabbed their gloves and they were somebody else or they went to work. They went to school. They did whatever, you know, they got to the point to even where the augmented reality was. You just put a headset on and you laid down and they didn't have to move. You know, so I, I think I don't that's very far advanced from what we're going to. But, you know, we've already got the Oculus where you put on the headset and you grab the, the joysticks or whatever and away you are. And you can tour places and do things with that. And I think it's only going to become bigger and more important in our children's lives of the future. And the last thing to answer the the world my child will live in it was vaccines. I mean. You know, vaccines for us were just, oh, you need a flu shot, go get it. You need your chickenpox vaccine. You need whatever you kind of need. You just went and got it. Now, 
you know, they had to really turn around and really improve on the technology of how it's done. You know, some places they're trying to remove uh, the use of needles and use patches because A, it's easier to transport a patch than it is a needle in a, in a vial uh, for the vaccine and they can be easily distributed versus, you know, having to sit there, clean the spot, hit it with a needle and just, you know, then you got to get rid of the needle. That's a lot bigger of a thing to get rid of than a patch for a piece of paper that you put on your arm. But, um, you know, that brought up to it was very important that we have vaccines. Um, I am a person that I believe that, you know, if you want a vaccine, go get it. You do you. Me, I went and got it. I have some minor health issues. My wife went and got it because she thinks they're very important. Uh, my mother, who has some serious health issues with her heart, uh, she was very, very skeptical for a long time. Then she finally decided to do it because my daughter went and got her vaccine. And she said, if my daughter can, if my granddaughter can do it, I can surely do it. So she went and got it. And, you know, my, my as soon as it was able for my daughter to get a vaccine, I want it. And I said, are you sure? This is your choice. I'm not going to take it from you. And she goes, no, I want it. I want to be safe. I want to, you know, want to go to school. I want to do this. I want to do that. Okay, let's go get it. And, and that's what we did for her. We did give her a choice. But, you know, she ultimately wanted to do it because she thought it was the best option. Uh, the next question we were asked to answer was what kind of world will the children of the future live in? Um, I chose renewable resources, global warming, and I know a lot of these topics seem serious or important, but I did pick extraterrestrial life. I did have a lot of fun researching all these topics. Definitely gave me a lot to think about and it definitely helped me on in uh, other aspects of my life too. So um, I did think these were fun topics to talk about, but they're also important topics to talk about. I know extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial life may not answer all of that, but... I think it's a fun topic and I think it's something that society needs. But um, uh, renewable resources, they're very important, you know, um, and we it can't be done overnight to just to switch cold turkey and be over under them. And we do have limited fossil fuels. So, you know, we have to take the how important they are into consideration. Uh, not only will it reduce our need for fossil fuels, but it will also help the quality of life. I mean, look at I mean, the pandemic is the big one, the big factor. But, you know, when the world shut down, there were cities that usually have smog when you look out your windows and you, you know, you can't see very far. But there were people that were reporting that the towns that they live in or the cities, they'd be up in their high rise apartments. And after a few days of nothing going on, they could see the they could see the skyline. They could see the jungle or the forest. They were starting to see mountains, people that were elderly said that they hadn't seen these mountains or jungles for years, you mean decades, because of how bad the smog was. So I definitely think that renewable resources will help that and they'll increase, they'll improve our air quality. And we need to make it a priority. We need to focus our efforts on it. We can't cut a cold turkey because we're so dependent on it, but we do need to improve and we do need to put advances on it because it's a very important thing to do. Uh, but we also only have limited fossil fuels, so the faster, the better. But like I said, we can't cut a cold turkey. We still depend on them, so we've got to find a good, even playing field in order to get there. Uh, all these renewable resources will affect global warming. Uh, like I said, they will improve the air quality, and it will just make an overall better way of life. Um, you know, every little a bit, little bit helps. Every small amount helps. I mean, you could. You know, start by putting solar panels on your roof. I know that is expensive, but maybe it's a, a step in society that's more people start doing it and it becomes more widely spread. It can be something as simple as a bus depot uh, instead of their, you know, some of our natural gas powered or diesel still to this day. But maybe, you know, one one year they take one of those big buses and they turn it electric. And then maybe the next year they take one of the smaller ones, the ones that go to smaller communities, ones that go to pick up the elderly to take them on their weekly trips. And maybe that switched to an electric one. And they just slowly do it. Maybe that's maybe that's every other year they do something like that, you know. And, and sure, um, people who now are buying electric cars, the more people buy them, it'll bring down the cost. And maybe people will start being able to afford it. Cause right now there are some people who just, I can't afford, you know, a, a new, um, a loan. I can't afford a new payment. I can't afford to do all this right now, but maybe they can find other aspects that they, you know, rely on to help limit their fossil fuel usage. 
And uh, last but not least is extraterrestrial life. I really do hope that we do see some kind of extraterrestrial life. I think uh, even though every uh, science fiction movie tells us that it's probably a bad thing, the worst bad thing to do, but I do think that if we got to see some kind of extraterrestrial life, it would be something that would just help us immensely. And, and not just in the fact that like, you know, all this technology, all these answers to the universe, but maybe just, the fact that we're not alone. I mean, come on, this, we're literally a grain of sand in a beach of a universe. And you can't tell me that there is not something out there. I don't know what it is, but there has to be another sentient life being that wants the same aspects as we do. Sure, we'll have to keep our guard up at first. And maybe scientists are not the exact people that you want to have talked to them. And, pr and maybe even political people. Maybe you find some happy medium. But I do think that it, it will happen and it should happen. And I think that hopefully we get to see it. But if not, I hope our children or even of our grandchildren will be able to see it. I think it will be an immensely important um, advancement and just uh, something of epic proportions that will just, you know, maybe maybe help us just, you know what, let's put away, put aside all our differences and just put, you know, focus on the sciences and in developing stuff for natural resources and you know, helping against global warming, helping against pandemics with a vaccine, communications, and just helping society in general. And I just hope it happens one day. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for a great semester. And thank you again for giving me all these topics to look up. It has helped me immensely. And have a great night.